Stitch a key and Adafruit present. This week's Eye on MPI is CUI Devices, Lidiata, what is the NPI of this week? All right, I'm glad you asked. This one, well, I, I made the joke in the text that, you know, uh, if you're reading like Reddit or, or you know, stock tip sites, they always say buy the dip. Well, uh, this week we're going to talk about buying the dip switches because we're going to talk about these new rotary dip switches from CUI Devices. Um, so this is, you know, what a rotary dip switch looks like. There's actually a couple different uh, varieties and family in, in this family. Uh, we like this one for its jaunty pink, uh, you know, tall um, actuator. Um, but before we get into rotary uh, dip switches, let's kind of explain the history of what these uh, used to be and why these are way better. Um, so in the before times, uh, when engineers had to have, you know, custom setups for their hardware, some configurable things, you didn't have an LCD, uh, you didn't have a touch screen, you didn't have, you know, um, like a full keyboard maybe, but you did have um, jumpers. And um, if you remember, you know, if you somebody who built a computer, you might remember having to set jumpers on, uh, you know, your ISA, I, ISA sound blaster card to set the IRQ, or this is really common if you have a SCSI drive, um, you would have to set the uh, SCSI address on the back by by putting in you know various jumpers and then like you know read write speeds and whatnot, um, and you know jumpers are really annoying and they get lost and so eventually some folks were like, ah you know we have to just, we have to do something better than jumpers because they you know they're they're a penny a piece but like once they're lost you can't buy them at a hardware store and like your people end up all hoarding little bags of jumpers, so instead um, folks eventually started coming up with dip switches. So um, dip switches, you know, they look like this uh, and they have, um, you know, usually they're numbered. Um, there's like one up to like 16 switches and each one is a single pulse, pull, single throw. Um, th these switches are all off. You can see the on direction is on the other side um, and you can kind of nick them with your finger uh, tip and um, push each one on and it will close the switch and then you can use that to configure your setup. Um, and the dip in uh, this dip switch is uh, stands for dual inline, which is the same as a, you know a dip chip. Um, and in fact, the nice thing about dip switches is they are uh, 0.1 inch spacing, so they're really easy to use on a breadboard or a perf board um, because they can like they can even use sockets if you want, or you can just use uh, you know the same um, pin ordering as you would for a dip switch. Um, and, you know, you still see dip switches uh, used um, on configuration hardware. Like, uh, we just quickly just Googled for, like, you know, dip switch manual. And other than old motherboards, um, you know, there is, uh, this is like a Culligan uh, water filtration system. And it's got um, uh, dip switches at the top. And uh, the dip switches... Um, are used to configure like, you know, the, the ice maker and whatever. So basically, you know, you have engineers and they're making hardware. You have to have some sort of like user or technician configuration. Um, you know, using dip switches is, is a way to do that. The only problem is, is that, um, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, like you have to have a manual like this, which actually says like, okay, this one's on, this one's off, and you have to have these little drawings. Um, that said, you know, if you want dip switches, CUI makes a lots of dip switches, and, and we use dip switches a bunch, especially the SMT ones, which are great. You just pick and place them onto your design, um, and uh, they're super easy. Um, and uh, they come in, like, right angle and slim and surface mount, and uh, piano style is my favorite. Um, but what you can do if you have a, you know, a four-switch um, dip switch is instead of like having this like binary code table where you have to tell people like, okay, for configuration number one, you know, flip the first one for configuration number two, flip the second, but for configuration three, you have to flip the bottom two, right? Cause you have to do binary code. Instead, if you have a, uh, rotary switch, um, like this, it's a rotary dip switch. It does the encoding for you. So you have like this kind of friendly, human friendly, uh, 10 or 16 positions. And there's a little arrow, um, and then you just have to turn the arrow using a uh, screwdriver um, from zero you know, to nine or from zero to uh, F. So um, you know, it, it's basically the same code as a normal dip switch. It's just, you know, it's, it's simplified. You only have um, the outputs you need. Uh, the center two pins are 
ground pins and um, there are six pins total. The center two pins are ground pins and the outer uh, four pins are the four dip switches. Um, and there's a bunch of dips, uh, rotary dips available at CUI. Um, so I, you know, I, I said I, I took a screenshot of one, but there's actually a couple different variations. Uh, right angle, SMT, through hole, thin, you know, flat. Um, there's ones with uh, actuators. There's like right angle actuators. There's the uh, 10 position and the 16. And, you know, from what I can tell, the only reason you'd want one or the other is just for like user simplicity. Um, if you really don't need to have more than uh, 10 configurations, some, you know, it might be confusing for people to see like what is A through F because they don't know uh, hexadecimal. Um, okay, next yes. uh, is, uh, okay, and this is just um, some, some more tiles. Um, so yeah, uh, we picked up a couple and I thought I would just show them on the overhead real fast. Um, just showing off these really, really nice photos that they've got. So, uh, zoom in and out of focus. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh no. Okay. Um, so this is a 10 position and um, you would use a uh, screwdriver and you um, rotate, um, you know, you basically put it in the slot and then whatever the slot is pointing to, again, um, the code comes out on the pins on the bottom, the center two are uh, grounded. Um, this one is like, you know, there's this large body type and there's a small body type, but they're both, I wanna show, they're both 0.1 inch spacing. So you can mechanically use either. This one's just smaller, it's a little tougher to read. But um, you can see this one has a um, all 16 outputs printed on it. Um, I was kind of hoping that I could turn this with my finger and maybe when it's soldered in, you can. Uh, you could definitely use pliers, but um, nothing really beats a, uh, a flathead screwdriver. And then um, I opened it up and you can see the switches on the inside. And then um, this little uh, plate, which is what actually closes the switches. And when you look at the actuator, you can see like this... Uh, this binary code, which is what presses down, all these little notches press down on the switches to close them. So that's how it works. Like as you twist it, it has a, like, um, like a player piano kind of effect where it, it pushes down on um, the relevant uh, points. Okay, so um, Get so this on DigiKey. And if you're looking for it on DigiKey, this is short URL, yes. uh, digikey.com forward slash short for three F nine B R also the um, product ID to search for it. You could probably do two, two, three RDS, 10 S 10, four, five. There's SMG, a whole family. SD, yeah. Indeed. But you could probably just also find it by searching for like CUI, CUI. rotary dip switch. And that'll, yeah. that'll take you to there. There's a whole family of them. Again, there's like 25 different kinds of all the different configurations. Um, I just yeah. picked a, a, a demonstrative sample here. Um, I think these are underused. I think engineers should definitely put them in their projects because it's a great way to, um, set configurations or like brightness or like an address of a wireless node um, if you have multiple ones and you want to like quickly configure them um, you know for like a couple of cents you add one of these and it's it's a mechanically strong way to configure a project and then of course if you need more configuration bits um, you can you know get the 10 selection version and then just have multiple ones in a row so you have um, you know if you if you want like a thousand configurations you take four of the um, 10 position rotary dip switches and put them in the row and one, the, one is the thousands, one is the hundreds, one is the tens and one's a single digit. So now you have like, you know, massive number of possible configuration outputs. Um, so yeah, rotary dip switches is my recommendation for okay. INMPI. INMPI.